I'm Patty Fernandez and I'm an art teacher. Visit my website at pattyfernandezartist.com. Okay, let's draw. Today's project is how to draw the Great Sphinx of Giza. I take three fingers over here towards the right and I put a dot. And from that dot, I'm going to draw straight line over, curve line down, curve line out, curve line in, straight line out, straight diagonal up, straight diagonal up, and connect. I come back to the dot and I draw a straight line out, curve line down, curve line out, curve line over, curve line in and leave it floating. I come back over here to the left and I'm going to start right up here at this point and I'm going to draw straight diagonal out, curve line in, curve line in, wavy line, wavy line, wavy line off the page. I come back over here on the right and right about here I'm going to draw a curve line out, curve line out, Curve line down, curve line over, curve line up, and connect. Right at this point, I'm going to draw a curve line in, curve line down, curve line off the page. I come inside, and right about here, I'm going to put a dot, and I'm going to draw a curve line down, over, up, connect. I come over here on the right and I put a dot and I'm going to draw a curve line down, up, over, connect. Right in the center. I'm just going to draw a straight diagonal, curve line over, up, and leave it floating. Come down, draw a straight line across, underneath, curve line, straight line, curve line, and leave it floating. Come back to the top. We're going to draw one two, three curve lines. We're going to come over here, draw a curve line, curve line in, up. We're going to mimic this in over here, this straight diagonal, straight line, straight line up, leave it floating. Come over on the right and we're just going to draw straight lines across. Okay, come right about here, we're going to draw a curve line, Curve line, curve line, leave it floating. Come back over to the side, little slightly wavy line, I guess. And right here, we're going to draw a curve line, curve line, curve line, leave it floating. And now we're going to draw straight lines, jump over, across. Straight lines, jump over, straight line jump over, jump over, straight line, jump over, straight line, straight diagonal down, leave it floating, and I think that is it. Okay, let's see how we're going to color this in. Okay, the Sphinx has about three different colors going on. So I'm going to start off with a multicultural crayon and I'm just going to go over or next to the lines in black that I've already drawn and this is just so I get a little bit of that color going before I add anything else and this is kind of makes it easy to color this because if you drew your black lines all you have to do is now follow those lines with color we're going to color this a couple of different colors, okay? Now the Sphinx is made out of one big giant piece of stone and they think it was colored, very brightly colored, but we don't know what that looks like so we're just going to keep it the way it is if you went to Egypt and saw it. So that's my first part of color. I'm going to come in and lightly loop-de-loop, -loop, not a lot, but I'm going to loop de loop over the top part just to give that stone first color down. 
all the way across, not real dark, just lightly, because like I said, we're going to add a couple of different colors. Next, if you have gray, we're going to now go over, again, the lines we just drew with the gray, including the features. And the reason why is because this gives you another layer of texture for the stone. Okay, so if you drew your lines, multicultural lines, now all you have to do is draw the gray next to it. All right, some of you might say, hey, I do not have multicultural crayons. I do not have gray. What's a person to do? Well, you become creative and you add different colors. Instead of doing multicultural crayons, I would use yellow-orange for my first layer of color. Instead of doing gray, I would probably use maybe yellow just to get another color on going on there. You got to remember that all of the facial features are if you see them are shadows. They're not colored in, so it's basically stone sculpture. Okay. Now that I've done that, I come in with my brown. Some of you might want to actually color in the features a little bit darker so you can see them. But again, you're just going to add a couple of lines that you've already done all the way across. Okay? And like I said, this is a totally monumental stone sculpture in the middle of the desert. Any kind of demarcations you see is from the light and the indentations of the actual features. Okay, now that I've done that, now I come over and I do a light loop-de-loop -loop all over the whole entire drawing. And you got to remember, this is out in the middle of the desert. So your color scheme is going to be browns, grays, maybe a little bit of yellow, depending on when you put it all together. Okay? Not too dark. You don't want to lose your features, but you do want it to look cohesive, meaning all of the parts go together. And they're all going to look a little bit different. And that's okay, because we're all artists. Then, because this is my drawing, I'm going to take my blue, green, my turquoise, I'm going to fill in the background with straight lines. Now this, amazingly enough, is appropriate on this sculpture because the Egyptians in their art used a lot of turquoise, lap 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 lazuli, can't say it. Anyways, they used a lot of turquoise, a lot of jewel-like colors in the background. So I would go ahead and draw my lines and then lightly again come back in and do this background. The sky is always so crystal blue in Egypt. It's especially because these monuments are set against the landscape with really nothing modern obstructing them. So you're not going to see buildings or telephone wires or anything like that. Okay, I think that's it. Might want to put a little bit more brown, shadowy, but I think that's enough. Okay, let's see what this looks like all colored in. Okay, here is my Great Sphinx of Giza. He's got a head of a human with the body of a lion. It's the oldest monumental sculpture in Egypt. Supposedly it was built to guard the temples. Okay, bye-bye.